Nothing. <laughs> another day, another whammy. <laughs> hey, Johnny, you want to play some tennis? I'll have Sheldon whoop us up a tennis court. Okay, one tennis court coming up. Oh, oh, Zelda's coming. You, boys, come on out. You've got a visitor. I brought my niece Harriet home. She's going to spend the day. Oh, no, her niece Harriet. No problem. We'll make it mixed doubles. <laughs> tennis, anyone? <laughs> mixed doubles, my foot. Man, that girl's a monster. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, Sigmund. See, well, she was here a couple of years ago. And man, was she murder. Ugly and miserable. A real pest. Boys? Boys, where are you? <sighs> Don't you dare answer. I don't want to get stuck here with Harriet. We better get out of here. Boy, I wish we were like you. You know, just disappear like that. Be my guest. Huh? Holy mackerel. What happened? Johnny, where are you? I don't believe it. Where is it? Duffy, what am I going to do? Try taking a long walk into the woods. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about taking the trails over there, but... I'll take my trail. Is somebody in here? Just those lazy old movie-watching types. <laughs> Duffy? You should take a walk in the woods. What's going on here? And then have a talk in the woods. Why are you talking? Well, because I have one chance to, and I thought now might be good. Y you can talk? But only once? I don't make the rules, Phil. No, no, I, I don't suppose you do. But hold on a sec. Okay, but just remember what I told you. Right. Walk, talk in the woods, but you stay there, right there. Now, he was a troublemaker, but, I mean, you can't blame him for the way he was raised. Did you know his father? Owen's father died before he was even born. He uh, was a friend of the family, a longshoreman out of uh, Florida. <laughs> but Janine didn't want him to know that. Well, she kept filling his head with ideas that his dad was some rich business tycoon that was going to come back and, and take care of them. Barnabas! Quite the haul you got there. <laughs> what? No sea monsters? <laughs> I've seen what lives below these waters. You keep sailing this cove, there'll come a day when you won't be laughing anymore. Maybe. But not today. That's friends <laughs> for friends if you got more old. Everybody needs friends. Everybody's unmuted. Hello. And we'll I'm the only one you. that isn't. Hello. 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 So we got Susan. And Sherry, you need to unmute. And Tom yeah. and Sherry and Sherry. Okay. <laughs> Sherry or Sherry? Sherry. Sherry. Okay. Sherry and, and Sherry. Allie. <laughs> Welcome and thank you. forgot you. me. <laughs> Hello, Miss Parsons, thank our you. mistress of ceremonies, yeah. and our hostess with the mostess. Uh huh. <laughs> so, um, no, I, um, sorry, I had another call earlier and I couldn't get off of that until just before five and uh got my friend to start the video for me and um hope you like that mm -hmm. very nice <laughs> was good. how are you feeling i am feeling about 90 percent good and i hope in two weeks when uh we have our trip to portugal i'll feel 95 to 100 percent hope so Great. i hope so yeah it's Tracy, Sending vibes. Good vibes for you, Thank Donnie. you. Thank you. I need that. 
but uh, Tracy is a great friend and uh, an excellent business partner. She has agreed to uh, help me on a film that I'm just uh, preparing mm -hmm. now. And uh, then when we were talking about that, I had told her about another project uh, that I have. Um, this is, when I turned 60, I said, it's um, either now or never. And uh, if not me, who? If not now, when? And so um, I'm shooting out three uh, Hail Mary passes. And that is uh, a short film. Uh, and I'll talk to you about it a little later on uh, called Sky Blue. And we have a possible big star attached, but I can't use her name until um, she allows me to, and she's agreed. And she hasn't said no, but she hasn't said yes. So we can't talk about it, but she's a pretty big star, I think. And uh, a friend- Jody Foster? I <laughs> uh, wish. Um, I want to get you two together again. I really do. But if that's, that's a good it, idea. If I can do anything, Johnny, because I, as I said, I have an idea for a, I want to do a flip a reboot, and with you, but with an African American cast, and Sandy has to be a girl, but I have you in mind to play Hap. Okay, and who and who's Hap? Remember Andy Devine? You ever watch the TV series Flipper? Yeah, I don't. Andy Devine. Yeah, he played Hap, Bud's okay. friend. Okay. Yeah, that, Google. Um, they should have a uh, uh, something. Um, an episode on YouTube. I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Yeah. But anyway, so that's number. Well, that's number one. Number two is I'm writing my memoirs. Oh. And um, I will answer some of your questions online with excerpts from my memoirs. And or if I don't have that and I think it's, oh, I need to add that. I'll mm -hmm. quickly write a paragraph and then stick it in. Very good. And nice. then my uh, third is a, an hour and a half documentary on the drug policy of Portugal. And when I mentioned that to Tracy, she goes, I've never been to Portugal. And I said, well, um, I'm hoping to go back pretty soon. And uh, if you ever want to go, um, I'll, I'll be your translator. And she goes, well, let's go. <laughs> and I said, okay. So I said, um, I'm now making the connections so that um, well, a quick wrap up of, um, I should put it on a PowerPoint, but I don't have it yet anyway, but a quick, um, wrap up, um, Tom and I are at a bar in California and, um, our Tom that's here with us tonight. <laughs> I don't know if you drink or not, but I, don't I wish. Drink. I don't drink I don't anymore either. either. I don't either. But anyway, I occasionally have a a, a, a bourbon every now and then. That's okay. That helps to go to sleep, and that that's not not. I don't do anything else. No problem. Anyway, mm -hmm. but Tom and I are at a bar, and there's a pretty girl in the middle. She makes eyes at Tom. She makes eyes at me, and so both of us saunter over to her, and um, <laughs> when we get over to her. You know, I say to Tom, I saw her first. And he says, no, I saw her first. So we start to grapple. The police are called. They separate us. I don't know what happens to Tom, but I get put into a, a, a room with a police officer. And he says, pull out your, your pockets. Now, this is just all supposition. I'm just kind of for hits and giggles. You know what I mean? Cool. Anyway. And so I pull out my pockets and I've got two grams of cocaine. Oops. And mm. I have one prior minimal arrest for minimal possession in California. Well, not in Los Angeles County because we have a DIA that's full of BS. But mm. if um, 
I would just be let out. But with a good DA, um, I would probably be told, um, you know, you have a choice, you have a prior, you can take one year in state prison or, um, you know, go to court and be possible for three years. So I take the plea deal of one year and again, hits and giggles. Um, I've got uh, a wife and two kids at home and I'm the major breadwinner. So my wife and kids have to go on welfare. One year in California state prison is $75,000 per prisoner. Mm -hmm. One year on welfare for a mom and two kids is about 50 grand. So that is a hundred grand, not including court costs and all of that. And so now we switch the script and Tom and I are in Portugal and the same thing happens. When I get put into the room, I pull out my pockets and they go, well, we're gonna confiscate. Well, in California, they've already confiscated my drugs, but in Portugal, they confiscate my drugs and they incinerate all the drugs supposedly. Um, and I'll believe that. Anyway, um, and I am then given a similar to a parking ticket. And it says within the next um, 72 hours, you are to present yourself before the dissuasion commission. Now persuasion, they make you do something. Dissuasion, they try to keep you from doing something. So in the dissuasion commission, I go and present myself 72 hours later. And I go into an office, which is, fairly nondescript um, and I fill out some papers and my time to meet somebody and I meet with a counselor such as myself, a certified counselor or greater, somebody else. And they give me what's called an ASI, Addiction Severity Indexer. And they do that by asking me questions about my drug use, my drugs of choice, and I answer those questions. Then um, they uh, ask me to go back into the room and wait for the um, for the um, well the uh, officials. I get called into the officials with the. Uh, um, they don't have robes on, which if you go to a real Portuguese court, they have robes. Oh, which one is that? Oh, that's... Uh... Unmute. Oh. And this is Joey. Joey, that's his name. <laughs> oh, I like that. Anyway. I showed you one of my, uh, one of my cats on there. Yeah. Oh, not my cat. <laughs> you, you I have three get, dogs. You can go get him in a little bit. Anyway, so um, I then wait for the uh, magistrates. That's the word. And um, the magistrates, when I went to a, 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 a hearing that the public are not really allowed in, but... Um, because I'm a documentarian, they let me in. And uh, anyway, hopefully Tracy and I will be able to see one, another one. But we, you go in and there are two magistrates, maximum, a minimum of two, maximum of three. One of them needs to be a psychiatrist or psychologist that's well-versed in drugs and alcohol treatment and recovery. And the other is what they call a jurist or a, um, uh, and or a, um, 
a jurist, and they must know the law of 2001, which is when they put it into effect. And then they take a look at my document and see where I am and see what uh, was my drug of choice. They look at my SI and the ASI will be scored from zero to 10. Zero to three, well, first of all, the first 10 minutes, they will be telling me all about the drug of choice or drugs of choice and what those drugs do to my spiritual, physical, emotional, mental um, set and uh, how that works. Then they uh, have me, uh, or if I'm that individual, then um, they'll take a look at my ASI. If it is an ASI of zero to three, they say, get out of here, kid. You bother me. Don't come back for you know five years. Your name's going to be on a list. Be careful and don't get in trouble again, or there'll be more problems. Four to six, you may have a problem. Here are the choices that you have. And the choices that you have may or may not be, um, you know, treatment, recovery, medically assisted treatment. How would you like it? They ask you. Seven to ten, you a mofo at it. Get your butt into treatment right now. Um, but nothing is forced. Nothing is mandated. Um, the person always has the right to refuse. But when they get seven to 10 and they're there for the second time, the sanctions will be greater. Um, and so it's more of a treatment first before um, jail and punishment, which is basically what we do in the United States today. And so my um, documentary is going to be following five individuals from their arrest through their treatment or whatever else, and for nine months to a year, how this program works. Um, it is about 80% effective, 75% of HIV um, has gone, or HIV infection has gone down by 75% That's from good. Um, <laughs> intravenous drug use. Um, youth drug addiction has gone down by 70%. Um, the cost, let's just say there are 10 people in California at 100,000 a pop, that's a million bucks. And um, in Portugal, you have uh, 10 people and nine out of 10 are zero to zero to three. So, but we'll say seven out of 10 are that. That's about a thousand bucks a person at the most. So that's seven grand. Two people need um, minor treatment. Let's say about four grand or three grand. So we get an even 10 grand. Um, and then one person needs uh, treatment, serious treatment, that's about 2,500 bucks. So um, you're looking at less than 50 grand wow. for 10 people in Portugal and a, and a million dollars in California. Wow. So that's why I believe it's um, treating drugs with, um, minimizing anything that is less than two grams from heroin to cocaine, um, four grams of marijuana, but um, all of it is, you know, less than what most people would be having for, you know, a weekend. Um, and, you know, that just kind of makes it real positive. 
anyway, so that's one of the reasons that Tracy and I are going to be going to Portugal. Is your dog quiet now? Yeah, you can put me back on. Okay. I got a different dog. He's no better. Problem. Just yes, didn't... it's Fonzie. Oh, okay. There's Fonzie. <laughs> Okay. It's easier than Joey. I, I know two people. They're quite different work. They each had a um, child that died of a heroin overdose. Mm. And, uh, it you know, it's, it's very sad. Well, Sherry, you were with us for this year's memorials, weren't you? I think she was with us for the birthday celebration. Oh, birthday. I, okay. Right. I was. I was yeah. Were we both? I don't know, but. Yeah, this Sherry was there. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you for remembering. Yeah, yes. um, and you can join us if you know those people or even if you don't and give me their names and if their family would like to have their photo and names read and would like to share about them. Um, this year, not exactly sure when, either the first or second week in September, that's also when we're supposed to do the film, so I'm not yeah. sure um, if uh, either the first or second week, because we're only going to do it one week or the other. Well, I'm not uh, really close with them, so but I'm just like I feel bad for both. No, you know, but for them. do you con are you in contact with them anymore? No. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah. we will be doing another um, memorial of those lives lost and lives recovered in yeah. early September. That, Isn't it sad about that kid, Jansen Panettiere? 28 years old, he just died. Oh, is that uh, her, what's her name? Um, her it's brother. His, yeah, uh, uh, Hayden Panettiere's little brother. Yeah. Very sad. So can I ask um, yes. two questions about what you've just covered? Sure. First of all, when do you expect your autobiography to come out or be finished with it and second is with your documentary once you film and you've edited and put it together um will you distribute it or how will you show it and i take it from what you said portugal has a much better system than we have so how do you get the u.s to change its system i mean do you talk to state legislators or That's, what's the end goal well my end goal is to try to have um because we are a um democratic republic each state decides their own um medical and mental health needs um and so it has to be done state by state or county by county um, Oregon has tried it, but it has not gone so well. And uh, next time I'm in Oregon, except this time, but the, if, when I have a little more time, um, I'm going to find out how Oregon has done it and why it has not been successful um, in Oregon. Because they've tried, it's basically decriminalization of drugs it's not um taking you know free drugs wherever you want it's just decriminalizing it so that it's not uh that with any film number one is we want to take it to film festivals like i'm hoping that our first film called sky blue will be available for January and being having its big debut at uh, Sundance Film Festival in Utah. Oh, cool! Um, is my number one goal. Um, Mr. Redford, when we get the other documentary filmed and finished, which will probably be mid uh, 2024, we'll try to do the same thing if we can get it done early enough. Um, prior to May, uh, early June, we can have it ready for um, the Khan Film Festival and have it premiered there. Um, so then, it's, it's to bring awareness 
and get people talking. Exactly. Well, I mean, I want to make money. <laughs> Johnny, I, I, my opinion, I really think that they should decriminalize drugs and, and work on it from that way, just like Portugal does. Well, and again, each county is in charge of their own mental health mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. And um, actually in, um, uh, not Rhode Island, but- Out uh, New Jersey, my state. Is it in New Jersey that they've done that? I don't know. No, is it? Uh, it's not Connecticut, but not Rhode Island, but one of those states, one of the small states. New Hampshire? States. Anyway, one of those states, they've started doing that. And um, it's been working very well. Maybe and it's my state. Maybe. New Jersey. Yeah, I'll have it, to look it up. Yeah. But, um, Anyway, my autobiography is I have completed through four years old and um, I yeah. am now at uh, going on the audition for The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming. And That's such a cute movie. I love that movie. I getting, love that movie. And is, that, that is that when you met Brian Keith? When I did The Russians Are Coming, right. Okay. And um, well... If there's time, we will, I'll tell you about my other movie. Um, but let's see. So Tom. Yes. You are, where do you live? I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. I was born in West Virginia, grew up in Michigan. We lived in Southern California for a while, but we could never live oceanfront there because it's too expensive. But we bought an oceanfront condo in North Carolina. Well, beautiful. Yeah. We will be filming our um, right. our short film um, in and around Apex, North Carolina. Do you know where that is? I've heard of it. Yes. Yeah, it's um, in. It sounds like a famous name, but take you got to take one of the words out. County. Raleigh. Uh, no. I don't know offhand. Anyway. Um, it's kind of central, um, central North Carolina. Okay. So if you're available, we'll invite you to come down and watch this film. Oh, I would love to. Um, and what kind of work do you do? I am a special ed teacher in a middle school. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Beautiful thing. You get, I work help. with, I work with students who have behavior and emotional issues. Okay. So you got to be very patient. Yes. Okay. I'm and Miss Susan, we know what you do, but share with everybody here. Uh, I'm retired. I was a toll collector for many years. Which, and I like to which, write. Where was your booth? Uh, I was at Garden State Parkway. Uh, Barnegat, New Gretna. I oh. did a lot of overtime all over the place. <laughs> did a lot of overtime. Okay. And, now and you're then retired. I like to write. Then I retired because, well, our job kind of, Chris Christie kind of mm, cut our pay. Mm. And it, it, it wasn't very nice. But, uh, but you know, it just, uh, you know, and I like to write. I've always wanted to write. I've always wanted, I mean, I, I have an idea for a movie. Basically, it's like a, a, a bad news bears for British version. A, a, a retired toll collector goes and um, re uh, moves to England after she retires, takes her four cats. She she meets some kids and teaches them how to play baseball. And she takes them to the, uh, um, gets them a little league license in England because they do have little league in England and takes them all the way to the little league world series. Excellent, very good. Yeah. Sherry, yeah. tell us about you. With Sherry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This, Sherry with the long hair. Yep, the long hair. Okay. Yeah, um, I live in Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, born Fargo. in Minnesota. Raised You're in, in North Minnesota Dakota. in Fargo. Yeah, I was born in the northern Minnesota. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, Minnesota Don't is just across know. the river. I'm there. I was there today. <laughs> but, Don't you um, know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you get in the country. Um, that's where 
Roger Maris is from. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yep. And actually, he was born in Hibbing, too, like where I was born. Um, Big Yankee fan. So was, I uh, Bob Dylan was also grew up in Hibbing, where I was born. But I, oh, no I love Bob Dylan. Um, lived in Montana for 10 years. Um, came back here to get my degree in child development and family services. Um, kind of retired in that they offered me an early retirement during the pandemic and my company I was working for was also filing bankruptcy and I decided that's a good time to go. Um, I may still go back and do something, but but uh, that was kind of one of those God moments like, okay, this is it. Decisions made, you know. Um, and I love to read and I'm I'm right and I'm part of a book club that's all over the country. We have members all over and uh, the facilitator lives in Texas and she's also an editor and I've got some books I'm working on for children, children's books. But Beautiful. I love what you're doing, Johnny, as far as um, being an advocate. Um, I went to, some of the people I went to school with in child development were also going into addiction treatment. So we shared some classes together Absolutely. and um, I, I find it very interesting. I'm thinking I wish my youngest son could hear this because he's also an advocate and not a drug addict or anything, but he's an advocate for a change in the prison system and the way drugs are dealt with in this country by the law. So um, yeah, I'm going to tell him about this. <laughs> yes, I, I truly believe in, um, I believe in definitely in, um, in our police system and in, uh, but for nonviolent drug offenders, um, they should not be in prison. They right. should be in treatment or re receiving help because the only thing a person in jail or prison learns is how to do more jail and prison time. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm definitely an advocate for changing of, and, and we're starting slowly but surely to change some of that. Um, mm -hmm. We got some of that change under the, um, uh, <laughs> under the uh, uh, Trump administration. And now we're getting some of that uh, more, under uh biden but not as much yet but we're hoping and seeing if you know those things can change um so you're semi-retired right but they're bringing you back in as soon as they can right oh they, they every time i go in there they try to get me to come back <laughs> but, uh, yeah. and ally we're, we're, we're expecting a blizzard tomorrow and this is our fourth blizzard in the last four weeks so I'm good with sitting at home and not worrying about getting to work. <laughs> so Allie, Miss Allie, tell us about you. And you're young. Why do you like Family Affair or me? I, I get that a lot. Um, so I live in Kansas. Um, I live in a little town, Abilene. A lot of people have heard of Abilene. Yeah. Uh, so I grew, I grew up in Abilene. Um, my maternal family lived in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and the halfway meeting point between my hometown and my grandparents is Hannibal. Oh. So I grew up going to Hannibal a lot, and so my mom bought um, bought me the, the Tom Sawyer movie, and there was one time, I, I want to say I was like nine years old, and we were playing and I was getting on mom's nerves. So she turned the TV on and she yelled at me. She said, Allie, sit down. And I looked at her and she turned on TV land and Family Affairs was playing. And I looked at her and said, mom, look, that's Tom Sawyer. And I uh, was like obsessed with it ever since. I've seen like all, a lot of your movies. I get that a lot. Um, we didn't have cable growing up a lot. So we grew up watching... Um, like Have Gun, Will Travel, Bonanza, Bewitched, um, Shirley Temple movies. Um, so I get that a lot that I am a little young to know 
like family affairs. And when people find out I have two Miss Beasley dolls that I have probably dropped two five hundred dollars on, they're like, "What are, are, are they new or old?" They are the original nineteen sixty seven Mattel ones. Um, both are not in con working order, um, and neither one has glasses, and one has an apron, but one doesn't. Um, and then I was at a um, antique store in a little town in Indiana, visiting my great grandparents. Um, and I found, I think, I don't even remember how much this thing cost me. I found an unused um, paper doll of Buffy. Oh. So I, I still have, I have that. Oh, cute. Not been punched or played with or anything. Mm -hmm. um, that sits with all five seasons. I own all five seasons of Family Affairs. Wow. Um, so oh. I think I got to be the oldest one here. I'm going to be 68, April 29th. Okay. Wow. I got, I'm, I'm sorry. April 29th. That's I and I shared I shared the same birthday today with Celeste Tome and, and E Plum. Okay. Well, just to interrupt you for a minute. Yeah. April 29th is also my birthday. Wow. Really? So you share really? a birthday with me. Oh well. There you go. So Ali, are you a student or are you working or both? Um, so I currently work at a elementary school in my hometown. Um, I work with special needs um, behavioral kids. Um, I am finishing up my degree in child development with an emphasis in special education. Um, however, I spent the last, prior to needing to do my student teaching, um, I was a reintegration specialist for the state of Kansas. Um, and so I worked with getting kids home that were in state custody. And I have found that that's where my passion is and um, helping the families and the kids and seeing those successes of when you do get to get them home. Um, and then the sadness of the success of knowing that I have to make that call that they're, they're, it's in their best interest that they don't go home. Um, and so I miss that. And that is my end game is to get back um, into that field. Right. And that's a nice thing. And parents, especially those who are drug addicts trying to get well, need to know that they can't get their kids back until they're on the road to recovery. Yes, and that is a hard, I've had, I've had great success with it, um, but I've also had to sit back and mm -hmm. tell them that I, I can't vouch for that. Um, I have to go to court and, and state that it's in the best interest that we do not reintegrate. Um, and that's hard At for this me time because I know that um, that I know that those parents love their kids, um, and I never want to. But them. they love drugs more. Yeah, and that's what you just have to say. You know, I mean, what I say is, I want you to have your kids back, but you have to want your kids more than you want to continue doing drugs and alcohol in a way and manner that are, is not safe for you or your children. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, good. New Jersey, New Jersey has a lot of good uh, uh, programs for that. Well, I, I think, I think Allie, I hope you can make it to Marshfield. Yeah, I, I saw you guys were coming and I told my mom we were packing up Miss Beasley and, and going. <laughs> Definitely come. It's going to be so much fun. And Miss Sherry, last but not least. Uh, well, I was born and raised in the city of Chicago. Hmm. Uh, Chicago. Yep. Go yeah, I like 108 Chicago. years to win the World Series, but we finally won. <laughs> Wait another 108 years, but um, anyway, uh, we moved to Texas. I now live in Granbury, Texas, five years ago. Mm -hmm. Big change from big city to small town. Um, and uh, I got two kids, two boys, uh, one is a firefighter, so we're really big with uh, volunteering and helping out with the fire department here in Granbury. And uh, I work from home, I'm blessed to work from home in a customer service job. Uh, roll out of bed at 10 to 7 in the office at 7 o'clock, and I'm there at 4 o'clock, and you know, I just love my family, love my job, and love volunteering. And I, I belong to a great church here in this town. Oh, beautiful. So, life is good. That's always wonderful. Yeah. 
And what's the name of the church? It's called Hope Community Church. Okay, they, they so, have those all over the place, yeah. don't they? Um, I, well, we're just the one. We're, we're, we're just oh, okay. one here. It's like 50 people. And when I was in Chicago, I was at a mega church. And so moving to Texas to a smaller church with 50 people is, it's, it's humbling and it's a blessing. Oh, absolutely. You, know, you take what you learn up there and you bring it down here and you just help who you can. Well, beautiful. Thank you. Oh. Tracy, yeah. tell everybody about you. I live in Oregon and I'm 63 years old. I'm single. My husband died about seven and a half years ago. I'm retired. I used to do medical billing and um, I love to travel. That's how I met Johnny. I went to Cancun. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Now, weren't you weren't you friends with his sister? I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah she was friends with my sister Mary first, and then my sister Mary had her 60th birthday in Cancun last year, and mm -hmm. that's where Tracy and I met. And um, it was actually Portugal was the first one. Uh, you know, I was just kind of joking with her and she goes, well, let's go. And I said, I remember that too. I remember that, but I was, I'm really quite shy and I'd known him maybe three days. And I said, oh, would you like to come up to Oregon? And surprise, he said, yeah, you can come. <laughs> well, she's in charge of a, uh, a group of uh, widows and widowers and yeah. they have a monthly meeting and it happened to be around her birthday and uh, she said, I'd like to invite you to come and speak. And I said, well, I don't mind speaking, but this is the 50th anniversary of Tom Sawyer. Maybe we can just watch the movie and have people ask questions after. And uh, so she said, sounds like a good idea. Yeah, make a plan. Hey, want to see what I have on my TV? I just wanted to show you. I, do, I'm, I did this for you, Johnny. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. You see it? Not okay. Not too well. Snowball Express. What is it? Oh, really? Snowball Express. Oh, okay. Yeah, I That's saw something coming down a white slope. So I figured yep. I didn't Dean know. Jones. <laughs> well, it's not really him, but you know. You tell you one, Johnny. You you really have worked with a lot of big stars. I have. That really that was have. going to be my question. Go ahead, um, Tom. Thank you. So I know when you started so young, and during Family Affair, you were still young, and some of the people, the stars who appeared on that, I don't know if you really realized um, who they were and their history. But do you look back on your career now and think, wow, I got to work with, you know, Jackie Coogan and Ida Lupino and and I made a list. Myrna <laughs> Loy, Mary Wicks. I mean, now, Mary Wicks is one of my was is one of my favorite people. She was so sweet, such a great actress. She started even in the talkies. Or in the um, silent film, she moved um, immediately from silent to the talkies and had always been the spinster, um, you know, none. Girl Friday. Well, I know she worked with uh, Abbott and Costello. Yes, and who, who done it? Like, who done it? Jack, that was Jackie the... Coogan worked with Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, Jackie Coogan was the uh, Tom Sawyer way before Johnny was. Yes, he was. <laughs> Jackie Coogan. But um, all the Family Affair people, I had no idea who they were until I got older. Right. Um, when I did uh, The Littlest Angel, I had Cab Calloway. Wow. Um, Fred Munster. Gwynn, of course. Um, and um, Connie Stevens. She was mm -hmm. pregnant with her last baby when we were filming. And uh, James Coco played your father. James Coco was my father. And um, E.G. Marshall played God. Wow. Yeah. Um, Tony Randall. And um, Felix. I mean, 
<laughs> they were all some really big stars and I knew some of them. Um, and Connie Stevens was kind of my favorite of those. <laughs> How, okay. Did you realize that uh, the guy that would later say "fragile" in a Christmas story? When when you, did you see a Christmas story when it came out? Oh Charlie? yes, yes, yes. And you said that's my dad from something evil. <laughs> exactly, and um, uh, Darren McGavin. Yep, was Darren my McGavin. father, and. Um, his wife, my mom, Sandy Dennis. was Sandy Dennis, who was, uh, I believe she was an Academy Award nominee. Uh, she won the Academy Award for Up the Down Staircase. Up the Down Staircase. There you go. Susan's the you one You are amazing, knows. Susan. I know. I can't help it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a TV and movie file. And I know books, too. I mean, I love the book. I must have read Huckleberry Finn like four times. Well, good. Wow. I, that's a good, and it's usually a banned book, and I don't understand that. Well, that's another. Story. I want other people to have a chance to ask questions, but with the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. Obviously, you weren't hanging your way up there. How <laughs> high ground yeah. were you? Just a couple of feet, or? Well, when you see um, John, what's his name there, Susan John? Who was the man who picked me up over his shoulder? Um, anyway, um, I can't think of it. Right the now. young, good-looking man who picks me up over his shoulder. Um, the guy that played the Russian soldier. Right. Mm -hmm. When he grabs me, we are two hundred and fifty feet in the air at the point where. Um, Felix Silla, who was my stand-in, he did all of the um, cousin, cousin it. it. He was cousin it, and he played. Really? He did my stand-in for being two hundred and fifty feet in the air from the long shots, mm -hmm. and he was very well protected with um, cords and ropes that went into the church. Actually, that church was built specifically for that reason. There was not a church there uh, before, and then they tore it down when the film ended. So you can go to... Um, Isn't it Fort Bragg? Fort Bragg, California. Mm -hmm. And you can see where the, the ships came in, and it's just a small little port there. Uh, uh, they were going to do it in, uh, what's the name of the smallest port in the world there in, uh, Oregon that we saw? Depot Bay. Yeah. They were going to do it in Depot Bay, but well, they, they, were. they couldn't get the, the, uh, submarine in. Oh, that was one of the places that, cause they wanted that. a small, um, little place, but they chose, um, Fort Bragg, California. Hmm. Um, but. Oh no. When the two, when Tommy and I were up, all of that was done on, um, on a set at 20th Century Fox. And then when I was crying, mommy, daddy, and you see the close up of me, that was also done, you know, five feet in the air, but with the camera at a low angle looking up at me. Um, but uh, the one scene where, um, gosh, I've got to remember. Anyway, John comes by and he says, boy, grab around neck, boy. And if you see in that shot, when he grabs me, I almost slip. Mm. And because my other hand falls and then I grab. And you can hear a blood curdling scream, and that's my mother down 250 feet below screaming um, because she sees that I'm about to slip. But they had built a very strong um, scaffolding off of the church that they had bolted in, and it wouldn't come off. But that's where the camera was. But the camera was up. 
250 feet on the scaffolding in the air. So. Wow. 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 Susan, you get one question because you always ask good questions, but we need okay. everybody else too. Okay, hold on. I kind of, I, my, my, my uh, mouse uh, uh, dropped the cat. Oh, here we are. I'm back. <laughs> okay, wait, what question? Who was your favorite person out of all, besides Jodie Foster? And I said, I am going to make sure that I get you two together because I joined a little group on Facebook for her. And I'm going to say, you guys got to get together. I want to see you two do a Zoom meeting like she did with Anthony Hopkins. Uh, 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 you know, you know, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, yeah, for, I... for the 50th anniversary, I'm trying to get her to at least give me a uh, a personal video that I can use. Yeah, that'd that be just, great. Just says, you know, hi, this is Jody. Uh, you know, had a good time or I didn't have a good time. <laughs> and I, you know, liked or I didn't like working with Johnny for the second time. And uh, I, you know, I remember that summer or I don't remember it at all or whatever she hey, wants she, to You say. were her first uh, uh, screen kiss. That's right. But favorite person to work with? Yeah, well, I, well, I mean, like the uh, big, like any like big celebrity. I'm not talking about family affair. I'm talking like um, actor. Well, because like uh, Jonathan William, what, Jonathan Winters. Was yeah, he funny? Jonathan Winters was, I have a very fun story about him in the book. Um, when we were doing um, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming. He's hysterical. He's very funny. And um, anyway, um, my favorite person that I got to meet in 1973 was... Old Violet Eyes, um, oh, Elizabeth? Elizabeth Taylor. <gasps> oh, wow. I would have thought you would have said Michael Jackson, but I. Well, Michael was a nice guy, mm -hmm. but um, Elizabeth Taylor, mm -hmm. I knew that she was a child star and a child actress. And so I, uh, I, uh, talked you know I, I i was kind of waiting everybody was around her table at the governor's ball and i kind of slipped in and somebody kind of pushed me forward and she's oh johnny 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 come here come here come here oh and um looking at her and this was a medium thin she wasn't skinny but it was a medium thin um elizabeth taylor at the time i just went her eyes are purple, you know, oh, beautiful. And, and uh, just, you know, she, her skin was flawless. And I just said, you know, um, very nice to meet you. She goes, oh, you and Jody did such a good job. And I love Tom Sawyer. And, you know, and I said, well, thank you very much. We, we enjoyed, you know, and then she had to meet with other people, but it was very short. But, um, you know, she gave me a hug and a kiss, I think, if I can remember right. And, uh, you know, oh, it, was, cool. it was very fun. Okay, mm -hmm. Sherry with the short hair, since you went last. Okay. Uh, so I was always a big fan of General Hospital. I heard you were the original Scotty Baldwin. Correct. Was that a big part? Was it, I mean, were you on for, it was before I, I started watching it. I was on for one year from 1960, okay. well, when it began, which I believe was in 1964 or 65. Um, I'd have to look, you know, when I write my book, I'm going to have the numbers. Okay. Right. okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay. Um, Dr. Baldwin, do you remember him? Uh, let's see. So it was St Steve Scotty uh, Baldwin's father. Scotty Baldwin. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, Lee. No. Yes, well, Lee Baldwin. Yeah, right. Dr. Lee Baldwin. Mm -hmm. He adopted me when he married my nurse mother. Okay. And then I believe 
Um, and I have to get all those names sometime. When I have the book, it'll all be in there, right? Okay. Okay. But um, I believe uh, I was only on for one year. And then a friend of mine took the role because uh, I couldn't get back from doing The Russians Are Coming. And soon okay. after that, um, Bobby... What's his name? Anyway, um, he took the role from me and uh, then they went into color mm -hmm. and he was in color. I was still black and white. Okay. And then, um, but my mother, I believe, had a nervous breakdown and killed herself. Okay. I believe that's the storyline, but I'm going to okay. find out. Um, I did a 50th anniversary uh, party um, of all the old former um, actors mm -hmm. on General Hospital. And oh. uh, it was kind of fun. And to yeah. find out from the fans, because they knew all about my characters and what happened. Yeah. I really yeah. got into uh, soap operas, except for one, Dark Shadows. <laughs> that was it. That was okay, it. Sherry, you get another question. Me? Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Um, I don't have a question, but I, I, I just want to tell you this. I, I'm truly addicted to Family Affair. Okay. And you were just, you, you still are, but you were just the cutest thing. And I loved when you used to say, Uncle Beal. No, it's <laughs> Uncle Beal. Uncle Beal. Right. Yeah, there's no you L. Said it. There I, is no right. L. No L. Okay. I'll have to listen Uncle to it again. Uncle Beal. Uncle Bill, it was just the cutest. I just, I just <laughs> melt every time I you say that on the show. <laughs> well, thank you, Allie. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a question? Um, I don't know. Well, I have one. Okay. So, I heard through I don't even remember where that in season five, you and Anissa were taller than what you were playing that they put the other adults on like milk crates to look make you guys look shorter is that um no i know that the fifth season we had um emily who was nancy walker nancy walker uh, yeah who was Rhoda's mom Rhoda's mom and yeah. the quicker picker upper girl, and also so Sophia's sister from Golden Girls. Sophia's sister and um, she, yeah, McMillan and wife. McMillan and wife. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe, see, I was growing taller than Anissa. Um, I don't know for sure, but Anissa may have had some growth um, problem. Um, I don't know that for sure. Um, but she, up until she was 18, was still quite petite. Mm -hmm. um, so I do remember that they were going to, in the kind of the fourth and fifth seasons, they never referred to us as the twins anymore. <laughs> they were going to try to um, kind of shy away from the twin idea um, and just not feature that as that we were still twins. But um, I don't remember, if you do remember or know where that came from, please send it to me so that I can take a look at it and see how true that that may have been but um i'll tell you one thing with your mrs beasley dolls um is it their um voice box that no longer works both of them have a voice box that don't work yeah okay at tracy's party a young lady came to the party and i fixed her mrs beasley voice box <laughs> i oh, have the cool. magic touch like that would be so that would be amazing because I took it to adult I took both of them um 
to like a doll hospital. Um, and I told them what I wanted to do because like one of them is very well loved by the previous owner. Um, and one is not um, as in bad a condition. But like, and one's voice box works a little bit better. It was like the pull string didn't go back in right. And the people were like, no, this is what we need to do. And I like panicked. And I was like, no, that's not what I said. And I grabbed them and I ran out. Um, <laughs> and I've been to a couple other places and I get these look, because uh, I get like people when I walk in there and they go, um, is that a Miss Beasley doll? And I go, yes. And they'll instantly go, oh, it's the 2005 Ashton Drake remake. No, <laughs> it's not. Um, I spent a lot of money on these. And then they go, well, aren't you a little young? And I go, yes, but. <laughs> well, I've got to tell you that the, the original Mrs. Beasley is in the Smithsonian Institution. Oh. Another That's reason why I go there. Because so my grandma, um, her and I's favorite movie was The Wizard of Oz and being from Kansas, that's kind of cliche. Um, but I want to see the shoes and now I need to go see the original Miss Beasley. Yes, And Archie absolutely. Bunker's chair is there too. <laughs> What's that? Archie Bunker's chair is there oh, too. Oh, that's right. Oh, I've and been to that. I saw that in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sherry with the long hair. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I have a question, and then I was going to ask you first before the question, can I take a picture? Because my kids, one of my kids, my kids are all adults, were, was saying, Mom, I think you're being scammed when I said, the phone call's going to come, the phone call's going to come. And they're like, Mom, well, we got a phone think, call with I you, didn't we? Yeah. And I'm like, no, really, look at, you can look at the Facebook page, <laughs> it's public. Well, absolutely. It's okay to snap one picture? But yes, you may. Of course, and um, I am recording this for your benefit. So each of you, um, I will have a link so that you can download it or at least um, keep it for your own uh, personal memories if you want. And then, thank you, uh, thank you. Then yeah. I will, uh, the I, with your permission, because if you read at the bottom of the first page when we when you came in that this is going to be recorded and I can do whatever I want, you know, with, with your likeness and uh, sometimes... You can put us in your documentary. Sure, sure, sure. Make me a star. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so, yes. Did you take it? Did you take I the did, picture? I did. Oh, so okay. I just wanted to ask you, on the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming, the okay. version mm -hmm. that I bought during the pandemic, um, and watched and loved it even more than when it first came out. Um, have you seen that um, commentary by Norman Jewison? No. Um, about it? I think it's in that version. It is fantastic. You know? Oh, wow. um, Does he say anything yes. about me? I, I can't remember that, but I remember how he talked about how difficult it was to make it. And um, how he went to Russia when it was presented there. And I want to say, you've got to watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, I think you can just look up that, probably that commentary on YouTube, possibly. I mean, it comes with the, the movie version I have. Um, but he, um, sorry, where was I going with that? He went to Russia. He talked about how it was shown in Russia. And he actually had difficulty getting back. I think he's originally, he's a Canadian himself, but he got over there and saw them see it. And he talked about the reaction. And I just thought, does Johnny know that he single-handedly, your portrayal in that movie, made this group of Russians in Russia that are watching it come to tears? You know, I thought, you, you, I'm just so blown away by that. And I, Aww. That's when I started checking into you and where you're at and found this Facebook group. But it was all because of that. And um, that commentary is so good. And from what I understand, he's still alive. He's in his 90s, but he's still mm. around. Mm. Um, but well, it's great. Um, I'll go grab my version of it and see what it says on it. You well, helped thaw the Cold War. I guess well, I did. Carl, Carl Reiner, who was uh, the star, mm. one of the stars... His last name on the show was Wicker. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
what with the Kerbal, with the Kerbal, and what? everybody to get from street emergency, <laughs> emergency. <laughs> so I have a question. Do you like the tidbits and the trivia, or do you want me to change things on the group, or any suggestions? Well, anything that you and I do with the group, we'll talk about it privately. But yes, I get yeah. my hand slapped a lot. No, 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 no. I just, you know, I don't want everybody to hear our business. But no, um, and I don't. But I need little tidbits about shows. I and... believe everybody appreciates them. And while I was recuperating i did have more time now i'm not going to have as much time to um you know i um we had a very good um administrator for about three months uh valerie and she did a beautiful job she and her husband are having some difficulties so she had to leave the group um but uh tracy has come in and done a great job because I don't mm -hmm. go there just every once in a while and if it's something that kind of catches my attention I go there but Tracy does a great job of you know uh, going through stuff and making sure that everybody's happy and um, but and and every once in a while she say Johnny did you take a look at this you know did you take a look at this and okay <laughs> And I'll I do get my that. hands slapped a few times. Oh, every <laughs> once in a while. I got a, one little question to ask you. Sure. Well, Sherry gets another question because that oh, okay. was a comment. But but uh, go ahead, Susan, while she's thinking of her second question. Uh, I was just going to ask one question. What child, young actor of the 80s and 90s who you think you like to uh, admire? Like Jonathan <laughs> Taylor Thomas, Asa Butterfield, um, Macaulay Culkin? Uh, of what what period? In the eighties and nineties. Eighties and nineties. Um, gosh. Uh, Did you like home improvement? <laughs> I was in the seventies, so this would be ten years after me, and twenty years after me. Mm -hmm. um, Kids from um, oh, like I I guess it was um, oh, what's her name from Pia the piano? Um, oh, Anna Anna Paquin. Anna, Anna, Anna Paquin. Yes, I thought she was a fine actress. She's and, still acting too. She's an yeah. adult now. Yeah, I thought you know that's probably um, my favorite of the the young actors in that period of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, how about Henry Thomas? Did you oh, Henry was a good. Yes, Henry. Did, did, Henry, did you did you watch E.T.? Yes, did I you did. See it? Yeah. Yes, it was a very good film. Okay, Sherry, you get to close okay. us out. <laughs> this one. <laughs> um, yes, Sherry okay. with the long hair. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was wondering on all these because you were involved in that industry so much. Were you able to have a best friend like through school, like a lot of us did? Did you have a, a best friend or were you just easily made friends and had lots of friends because of your um, job? Well, um, this is a very poignant and important story in my um, autobiography, but I was born December 13th, 1959. And we lived in uh -huh. a kind of a cul-de-sac. And, uh, but it was a, an open cul-de-sac. But at one end, there was a, um, at one end, there was a uh, field. And then just like horses and all of that at one end. And, um, we lived across the street from the chambers and Dodie and my mother were good friends and all of the, uh, oh, there's a puppy and all of, um, all of the kids knew each other. Um, it was a real sixties neighborhood where everybody knew everybody and um, everybody watched everybody's kids. 
And, you know, when your dad whistled and each dad had their own <clears throat> whistle. Yes. You better hurry up and get home or else you're going to get a butt whooping. And my dad that, had the whistle too. <laughs> yeah. My dad's was. Woo <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, on um, April 15th, David Chambers was born. And so he was four years, four months younger than I. And we would be in bassinets together and we would take baths together when, you know, his mom was watching me or my mom was watching him. Uh, my mom had five or four other kids under the age of seven at the time. And, um, but, you know, she said, what's one more, you know, especially if it's an infant, right. she loved babies anyway. So there was not a day in my life that I do not remember Davy being with me. Um, if you watch any of the um, uh, schoolroom scenes, David is in the schoolroom scenes. And my sister Mary is also in some of the schoolroom scenes. And so um, he was my very best friend. And when I was eight, we moved from Pacoima to San Fernando, which is about seven miles. And when I moved, I made sure that Davey came and stayed at my place every weekend or vice versa. And that whenever there was kids on the set, he got to come and be one of the kids. And uh, so he got his Screen Actors Guild card because of us. Um, but he never continued it. But he was a cute kid. And um, he did some modeling and family affair. And um, when he turned 12, he moved from Pacoima to, um, uh, to Chatsworth, and that was about 20 miles, 25 miles from San Fernando. So it was more difficult for moms and dads to get us together, but we still tried as often as possible. And then when we turned 16, we showed each other our, well, I had a van um, uh, that my dad gave me um that i turned into the um death machine and i had a we had a a boy <clears throat> scout um uh halloween party and we had no place to put the uh coffin after we finished with it so i put it in my the back of my van and um you know people would love to come and lay in it and get their picture taken and stuff <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and um, so, and he showed me his little souped up whatever he had that his dad helped him get. Um, and uh, then um, his father was an artist, but did, uh, well, 20 years ago, all of the big billboards were made with um, oil paints and not, you know, plastic that they're made with now, you know, they just uh, go through a big plastic run and then they put them up on there, especially up on Sunset Boulevard. And he was known for most all the movies and, um, um, and so, Anyway, he, um, he worked with his father and I um, was going to college and I was in a play, um, Butterflies Are Fle Free, and I played uh, Donnie, the part 
of the blind man and uh, a pretty young girl played the part of um, the the actress that uh, um, what's his name's girl wife mother to his children um, anyway um, from laugh in what's her name oh Goldie Hawn Hold Goldie Hawn yes okay. Goldie Hawn who played it in the movie anyway uh, my mother wanted to come see the move, the play and I had her you know and her flight to Salt Lake City because I was going to school at Brigham Young University and we got her a flight to come up and the day before David was up on scaffolding, not too high, but about 20 feet in the air. And since that time, um, what was that? I was 18, so 68, 78, I guess 78, would yeah. that be 18? Mm -hmm. um, no, 68, I was 10. That was 20, if no, just before 19. Um, so it must have been 67. No, I was 77. seven years old. 77, yeah, because I graduated in 77. Um, anyway, um, nowadays they have harnesses that they have to put on and all of that, but this is before that time. Anyway, somehow the. Um, uh, the scaffolding slipped and Davy fell from there and right onto a post oh. that went right through his body. Oh, he killed gosh. him instantly. Oh. No. And when oh. my mother flew in, she knew that she had to tell me mm. about David having passed. Now, in Spanish, we say amigo hermano, which is brother, friend, you know, friend that's like a brother, because that's what he was, as close as a brother could be. And when I saw my mother for the first time, mm -hmm. I saw her before she saw me. And she looked kind of pale, like there was something serious that was going on in her, her mind. And then she looked at me, tried to smile. Well, she looked at me and her face turned white. And then she tried to smile. And I, you know, ran up, mom, you know, and I hugged her. And we were locked in arm in arm together as I hugged her and we separated. And she just blurted it out. Johnny, I have to tell you, Davy died yesterday. Mm -hmm. And my body felt limp mm -hmm. and had my mother not been arm in arm i don't know if i broke my mom's back or if that was the beginning of her back problems but mm -hmm. um she um you know i would have fallen to the ground because of that shock and uh, she held me up and um i said no no it's not possible um denial which is one of the shock anger, yeah. denial, bargaining, um, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. um, acceptance and resolution are the yeah. uh, seven of the five um, um, series of, you know, stages of grief and death that you need to go through. But I went through all of them right there at the airport and I didn't fall apart until I got in the car and then I started bawling and uh, we didn't have cell phones back then. But as soon as I mm -hmm. got to my uh, house, I immediately called Dodie and said, you know, I'm in college, but whatever I have to do to get there, I will be there to celebrate his life. And I was able to give a eulogy and my father also uh, was asked to give a, um, a spiritual um, meeting because my dad, very, very good spiritual man. And uh, 
when he shared David's death to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, having seen his son having to go through that, my father got very, very emotional. And I, gosh, it's been 30 plus years mm -hmm. and I still get emotional mm -hmm. as yeah. I remember that, you know, and, you know, my father said, you know, David is not Jesus, but he is your, and he's not your firstborn, mm -hmm. but, you know, he will be looking over you and he's there uh, waiting for you. And, you know, um, I, I know mom and dad and my sister and my grandma and grandpa and some uncles and aunts are there, but uh, I'm going to, you know, definitely go through the, the crowd to see David. Uh, <laughs> When, you just uh, gave me goosebumps all the way down my oh. arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I can write that way as well. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, on a lighter note and a more positive note, um, don't want to keep you too long, but my um, really quick, the film that I'm writing is called Sky Blue. And it's all about, uh, I've written it. Um, I'm one of the producers. Tracy is going to be a producer and um, what uh, we've got is um, it's a story of a white supremacist old man or not old man but me um, whose uh, the backstory is um, he and his wife have a son an only son and um, very well loved and um, brought him up well. Well, he wants to go to uh, UCLA for college. And so he gets um, some grants or whatever, moves out to California, falls in love with a black girl, marries this girl. And of course, I don't let him in my life and I kind of as the Jews do cut him out of my life but my wife says I don't care what you think or do he is my son he's our son but I'm gonna go she goes to the wedding and her very best friend her name is Beth goes along with her they have a daughter and uh like Kunta Quinte um he puts her up in the sky and the first thing that he sees is a blue sky and so he calls her sky blue and she has blue eyes and mm -hmm. um, grandma comes to see him grandma takes care of him and his wife and the baby and um, Beth is there to help take care and um, they show pictures to grandpa, but he doesn't want anything to do with, unfortunately, he uses the word piccaninny, which is mm -hmm. a very derogatory word. Uh, but it's, I don't know if I'm going to continue with that word because it is very derogatory, but it kind of shows where his mind is at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in slave days, piccaninny means a black and white child that may have been sired by one of the slave owners. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why it's pretty negative. But um, anyway, um, she comes home and she has her 13th birthday. And because uh, in uh, mama's uh, Hispanic culture she has a king uh, no it's the quinceanera at 15 so she has a 13th birthday party and grandma goes to the 13th birthday party again this is all pre-movie um so you guys mm -hmm. will know what the backstory is you won't necessarily yeah. know it when you um will watch it um but it is um So 
Unfortunately, Sky Blue's mother and father die in a car accident. And we open the film with, um, his name is Billy Bob or William Robert Jensen, but they call him Billy Bob, of course, which is a good Southern name, right, Tom? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, so it's Billy Bob and Billy Bob Jr. Um, but we open with a uh, social worker who comes to check out the home to see if it is ready for the granddaughter. And he says, I'm not having no picking any living with me. And the social worker is a black woman who gets very offended and a little shocked by what he says. And um, anyway, um, Beth, oh, um, before this, his wife, her name is Thelma, named after my mom. Thelma, his wife, passes away, but before passing away, Beth has seen the very loving side of him, picking her up and bathing her and washing her and taking care of her in her last days, would not let her go to a hospice or any place. He made sure mm -hmm. that she stayed home for her last days and just loved on her the whole time. And so Beth saw this loving, caring side of this rather ornery old, you know, white supremacist. Anyway. So, Did you write the script? Yes. Wow. And uh, so back to the story, the social worker says, well, she's coming in at three o'clock. I thought everything was set up. And um, he goes, no. I'm not, you know, I'm not taking care of no mixed girl, you know, not coming into my house. Uh-uh, no way. Uh-uh. And she, but she's your granddaughter because I don't know her, never met her, never seen any, anything of her. And he goes, well, you know, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez, who was my son's business partner back in California, you know, he said that he contacted you and he says, I never talked to no Mexican. And I don't want no, uh, you know, no mixed girl living with me. And she goes, oh, my goodness. Anyway, he comes into the house where Beth is there and becomes, after the death of his wife, she kind of becomes a caretaker and brings him lunch and dinner and just makes sure that he's okay. Because that was the promise that uh, she made to Thelma before Thelma died, that she would come and take care of him if, you know, he needed anything. Anyway, so she says she would, and um, he gets the uh, business card from the social worker, which he puts on his uh, beer table next to him, and Beth comes in and takes a picture of it without him seeing it, because he tells her that it's none of his, her damn business, what is going on in his life, or with this, you know, what's going on, and she has kind of an idea, because she had been contacted by uh, Sky to find out about, you know, and she talked to him, oh, I can't wait for you to get here. And, uh, you know, and she didn't want to let her know that her grandpa's not going to see her, but she was going to try mm -hmm. to fix something. Well, she was taking care of children for as a foster mother and um, her teenage license had expired um, and she had only had her infant license so she had to re-up but she's now going to take care of her but when she gets sick Sky comes to see grandpa and you know it's a, about 30 days to two months into it where they finally meet and I'm not going to tell you anymore <laughs> <laughs> Was it difficult to play that hateful character? Well, I haven't played him yet. Okay. All we're, right. We're, um, we're finishing up the funding. Um, once I get most of the funding, I will open it up for you all to, you know, give 20, 40, 5, 10 bucks in a um, uh, Indiegogo. Okay. 
and um, we'll, you know, anybody with 50 bucks or more gets their name in the, um, in the uh, end credits. But um, again, uh, I've got, it's only going to be 50 grand. It's only a, a half hour movie. Again, I want to put it on um, uh, hopefully Netflix. We'll take it as a mm -hmm. short film, uh, especially if we get recognition at uh, Sundance, also the Sundance channel. And they don't pay a whole lot, but um, one of the other things I hope to do with it is once we get it around, I want to go around to uh, junior high schools and um, share it with young people talking about there are many individuals who mm -hmm. appear to be evil, awful, terrible people, but not everybody who is named a racist and a misogynist and all of this is that way. And we all need to learn to love everybody and kind of as a junior high school um, educational tool um, is what I'm looking for it to be after probably about a year, year and a half after it's come out and then uh, go around to schools and um, get it seen by more young people um, and just have, you know, a pre questionnaire and then, you know, a post questionnaire. And How then soon before? How soon before we get to the point where we could invest? Um, well, um, right now I'm taking anybody <laughs> with $5,000 or more. Um, <laughs> but um, when, uh, when we get around the 30,000 mark, um, which I'm hoping before the end of June, we will open it up for an Indiegogo campaign for the other 20 grand and anything extra than that we'll use for post-production because we're doing a, um, it's called a, um, come on, John, remember this. It's going to be a SAG after film because the actress we want to use is SAG after, I'm SAG after as well. And it is a, a short, um, a short film, and we can't really have more than a fifty thousand dollar budget for the main part of the filming. Uh, and so, anything extra we'll put into the um, post production, and um, go from there. Well, we've taken a lot of your time. I hope that you've enjoyed talking with me and being with me and we will make sure that you all have access to this if you want to uh, keep it um, i'm probably going to have a 10 or 15 minute short of the best of um or whatever but the long version you will be able to have god bless and remember be a good friend find somebody who isn't having a good day, call them up, say, hey, something told me to call you. So be a friend. And um, that's my word to you today. God bless. Thank have you. A, Thank you. God bless have you, a wonderful time. Well, thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, very much. Yeah,